On February the 11th to the 13th, 2001, at the lodge at the Snowbird Ski Resort in the mountains of Utah, 17 people met to talk, ski, relax and to try and find common ground. What emerged was the Agile Software Development Manifesto. Representatives from Extreme Programming, Scrum, DSDM, Adaptive Software Development, Crystal, Feature Driven Development, Pragmatic Programming and others sympathetic to the need for an alternative to documentation driven heavyweight software development processes convened. This group named themselves the Agile Alliance and this group of independent thinkers about software development and sometimes competitors to each other agreed on the manifesto for Agile Software Development. Now let's take a closer look at the Agile Manifesto. On this screen we have a direct capture of the four core values of the manifesto. Let's take a look at this as a whole and then we'll explore each value in turn. Starting from the top, we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it. Through this work we have come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. And finally there is a following statement, while there is value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. Here they are saying that the items in bold on the left carry more importance than the items on the right, but there is still value in the items on the right. So as an example for the first value, so as an example for the first value, process and tools are still very important, but you should favour individuals and interactions more. Now let's take a more detailed look at these four values. For the first of the core values we have individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Software systems are built by people, and to do this properly they all need to work together and have good communications between all parties. This isn't just software developers but includes QA, business analysts, project managers, business sponsors and senior leadership and anyone else involved in the project at your organisation. Processes and tools are important but they are irrelevant if the people working on the project can't work together effectively and communicate. For the second of the core values we have working software over comprehensive documentation. Let's face it, who reads 100 page product specs? I certainly don't. Your business users would much prefer to have small pieces of functionality delivered quickly so they can then provide feedback. These pieces of functionality may even be enough to deploy to production to gain benefit from them early. Not all documentation is bad though. When my teams work on a project they use Visio or similar tools to produce diagrams of, and this is not an exhaustive list, deployment environments, database schemas, software layers and use case diagrams. We normally print these out on an A3 printer and put them up on the walls so they are visible to everyone. Small, useful pieces of documentation like this are invaluable. 100 page product specs are not, as 9 times out of 10 they are invalid and out of date before you have finished writing them. So remember, the primary goal is to develop software that gives the business benefit, not extensive documentation. For the third of the core values we have, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. All the software that you develop should be written with your customer's involvement. To be successful at software development you really need to work with them daily. This means inviting them to your stand-ups, demoing to them regularly and inviting them to any design meetings. At the end of the day only the customer can tell you what they really want. They may not be able to give you all the technical details but that is what your team is there for, to collaborate with them, understand their requirements and to deliver on them. For the fourth and final of the core values we have, responding to change over following a plan. Your customer or business sponsor may change their minds about what is being built. This may be because you have given them new ideas from the software you delivered in a previous iteration. It may be because the company's priorities have changed or a new regulatory change has come into force. The key thing here is you should embrace it. Yes, some code may get thrown away and some time may be lost, but if you are working in short iterations then this time lost is minimised. Change is a reality of software development, a reality that your software process must reflect. There is nothing wrong with having a project plan, in fact I would be worried about any project that didn't have one. However, a project plan must be flexible enough to be changed. There must be room to change it as your situation changes, otherwise your plan quickly becomes irrelevant.